Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. The dream of every actor is the perfect performance. The performance that brings the audience to its feet, shouting bravo, and brings the critics to their knees with rave notices. But audiences, critics, and playwrights, being what they are, this dream is seldom realized. In the upcoming suspense story, however, it is, with some startling results. Listen, listen then as Mr. Vincent Price stars in Rave Notice, which begins in just a moment. Memo on medals, facts and figures about military decorations with which you may not be familiar. Among the earliest forms of medals was a gold button presented by Alexander the Great to a high priest in the 4th century B.C., after winning an important battle. Crude medallions became the standard form of commemorating victory until in the 15th century, a noted Italian artist sculptor developed and perfected a classic medallion, the forerunner of our modern medals. During Queen Victoria's reign, the present system of awarding medals was introduced and was soon adopted by other countries. Two famous early American medals appear in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. One presented to Captain Thomas Truxton, commander of the U.S. Constellation, for defeating the French frigate Vengeance during the West Indies Campaign of 1800. The other medal on exhibit is the one awarded to General Ulysses S. Grant for breaking Confederate control of the Mississippi River during the Civil War. Old or new, medals represent a memorable, heroic act worthy of our respect and pride. And now, Rave Notice, starring Vincent Price, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I'm an actor, and this is a theater. Up there on the stage, beyond the empty seats lit by the single bare bulb of the work light, are my fellow actors. We are here to make a play. Friend Norman, sitting alone in the third row, is our director. This is the fifth day of rehearsal. It's not a bad little play, but you know Norman. Norman will manage somehow to spoil it. Norman will misdirect the actors and lose the values. No! No, 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 no. But, Norman, why not? Why not? Because I am the director and I say no. No! Yes, Norman. All right, cast, take five. Oh, Sam. Oh, yes, Norman. Uh, Sam, come over here. I, I want to talk to oh, you. Sure, Norman, sure, sure. Well, what is it? Sam, I've I've had to turn over the bell ringer to Luther. The bell ringer? That's my part, the bell ringer. What do you mean, Luther? Don't make it difficult for me, difficult? Sam. Difficult? I'm not making it difficult. The bell ringer role is mine, that's all. There's no difficulty involved. It's, you must be kidding. It's not as if I hadn't warned well, you, Well, look, Sam. tell me what's wrong. Tell me where I've gone off, what irritates you, what doesn't fit. I'll well, fix it, I'll I... fix it. That's my role, Norman. I carry the whole play with that role. Don't shout, Sam. Don't make a fool of yourself. A fool? Oh, look, Norman, why are you doing this to me? Because you're not right for it. Not right? Uh, you fat pig, what do you no, know? Oh, easy. What do you know? What do you know about easy, acting? Easy, Sam, take it easy there. Fat, fat belly, fat head, fat face. That's enough. You know nothing. I know you. I know actors. You're no actor. You stink. Oh, I'll kill you for saying that. And I'll kills you. Uh, did you hear that, Cast? Your witnesses, he's threatening me again. Yes, listen well, my friends. Norman, I'm going to kill you. Norman, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> uh, you see, you can't even deliver that line. You stink. <laughs> Yes, gentlemen. I want to buy a gun. 
Yes, sir. And what sort of gun did you wish to buy? One that'll shoot through fat. Sir? Oh. <laughs> Pardon me, I was thinking of... Uh, well, what have you got? What was it you wish to use this gun for? I want to kill a rat. Oh, I think then maybe uh, 22, huh? Now then, let me see here. Here's a nice little gun. Uh, that looks pretty small. This is an awful big rat, a fat rat. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I, I think a shotgun then, a four ten, yes. You think that'll do it? <laughs> it should, it should. Bullets, you have bullets? Shells you use in this gun. Very well, I want one. One box? No, one shell. Only one? Yeah, this rat I'm not going to miss. It's time now. He will come out of the stage door and walk this way through Schubert's alley on his way to Sardi's for a drink. I slide the gun out from under my coat and I wonder, heart or belly? Heart or belly? <laughs> belly. Belly, yes, his cultivated paunch fatted with actors' hearts. Here he comes, on cue for his exit. Goodbye, Norman. Sam! Ah! I'm shot. I'm shot. Norman, you're dying. Please, somebody call an ambulance, please. <laughs> Is this how you play your death scene, Norman? You're dying, Norman. Play it. Play it! He didn't die right away. He just lay there in Schubert's alley and bled. And then they took him to the hospital and they took me to Toombs Prison and they got me a lawyer. I suppose when he dies, I become a murderer, huh? Yes. They'll electrocute me. Yes. I must have been crazy. I thought of that. What do you mean? Temporary insanity. I thought we might plead that. Well, why don't we? Because you threatened him before witnesses at least twice, went to a store, chose a gun with great care, waited for him to appear. You did all this and then you shot him. Yeah, well, that's right, I did. That's premeditated murder. First-degree murder. So the temporary insanity thing is out. Way out. The um, only other thing I could think of is um, if we could prove you were insane all along. What would happen? I mean, what would happen if I were? Then they couldn't execute you. <laughs> of course. You seem very calm. I'm an actor. Insane. Mad. <laughs> I know a joke, a wonderful joke. I'm going to beat Norman, even in his grave. I'm going to have myself exonerated of his murder. Yes, freed of the charges. It's so simple. I'm going to play the greatest role of my life. Play it without makeup, without lights, without script or cue. I'm going to play a part strangely foreign to my nature. I'm going to play a homicidal maniac. moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, Joe, what are you doing? Oh, hi, Daphne. Just eating a midnight snack. What is that mess? That mess is a liverwurst, salami, lettuce, and peanut butter delight. Nightmare is more like it. What woke you up? My stomach was growling. What woke you up? You. Mm. And I was dreaming such a pleasant dream. Oh? What? I dreamed all of our savings bonds had matured and we were cashing them in. That kind of a dream I can appreciate. We were planning a trip around the world, and you bought me a fur coat, and I bought you that fishing tackle you want. Oh, it was gorgeous. Well, it doesn't have to be just a dream. Some of our savings bonds are ready to mature now. Joe, maybe we shouldn't cash them in. They can go on earning interest, you know, and it adds up fast. I know. That's why we started buying savings bonds, remember? With a bond a month on the payroll savings plan, our money is saved automatically. Stop waiting that sandwich under my nose. You're making me hungry. Well, fix yourself a sandwich, ma'am. I got all the makings right over here. All right. Move over, you bond-buying midnight maverick. I'm going to fix myself a humdinger. And now, starring Vincent Price, Act Two of Rave Notice.
I'm going to play a homicidal maniac. How? How? By using the method, the Stanislavski method. See, now, what is the most horrible thing I ever did? The thing closest to murder. I must recreate that mood. Murder, killing, blood. I killed a cat once. I was six years old. I had a stick. It was in an alley, this cat. I poked it just for fun. But he scratched me, and I hit him. Hit him with a stick. He started squalling, and oh, I thought I'm going to get in trouble. Stop that noise. Stop that noise. So I hit him again to make him stop, and again to make him stop. And there was blood, red blood on the gray cement. And I struck and struck and struck out the screams. Struck out the lights. Struck out the awful gaze of those great yellow eyes. Struck out the light. Strike out the spirit. Spark, I kill. The murderer am I. Hewn for the thrill of the silence of the cat. I am a murderer. A murderer I am. To kill without reason. And that's it. That's the character. All I need for turning it on is the memory, those key points, gray cement, cat's eyes, my feelings as a six-year-old. Oh, there'll be refinements. I'll refine it. Oh, oh Norm, if you were only to see this scene... <laughs> Dim the house lights, raise the curtain, and now to bring in the audience. <laughs> hey. Hey, you. Who may I ask are you? Huh? What's going on down here, Murph? I don't know. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, come on, now, William Mark, calm I asked a simple question, I expect a civil answer. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who oh, are you? so nice and quiet for a while. Then, uh, just yeah. answer my question, that's all I ask, and that's not much for a hero to be asking now, is it? You don't know who we are. I think he's putting on an act. Hey, hey, don't turn your head away. We know you hear us. Yeah, leave him be. You think he's kidding? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Very weak. You can do better than that. You're supposed to be a murderer, a homicidal maniac. So what's the emotion? Guilt. You've got to be guilty, 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 guilty. Smear yourself with the stuff. Guilty, bloody hands, guilty, and you want to be punished. Yes, punish yourself. That'll do it. But it'll hurt. So what? Not like it hurts when they shave your head and slit your trousers and strap you to your seat. See 10,000 volts coursing through this poor player's frail body. Murderer. Guilty. You should be punished. One, two, three. Curtain going up. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. There's blood on my hands, blood and filth and disease. I smashed him on the gray cement and smashed him. I murdered him. I'm a murderer. I confess it. I confess hey. it. Oh, look, I want to confess to purge myself of this guilt. Oh, come on. I am guilty to you here. I smashed him. I smashed him. Why are you getting so worked up about the guy ain't even dead yet? Not dead. He is dead. He's been dead these past 36 years. 36 years. Oh. If you don't punish me, I... Oh. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Oh. Hey. Hey, will you quit beating your fist against the wall? I am guilty. And I shall be smashed as he was smashed. Hey, your hand, you're going to bust your hand on that wall I there. I shall be smashed. It is written. You know the writing in blood that lies across the counterpane in the bed under the window when little boys are supposed to be far away in slumberland. Mahoney! Yeah? Get the doctor. This guy flipped. Hmm? Good. My hand, my hand is killing me. Something broken. I, I don't mind the bloody scrapes, knuckles, or even breaking the face, but not the bones. Two cats dead, murdered by my stick. Four cats dead, murdered by my stick. How long has he been doing this? About 15 minutes, Doctor. I see. All right, now you can stop that. I don't stop. I don't look. I keep right at it. I keep it apart. Murderer. Guilty. Stop it. It hurts, but I'm paying a price. Stop it. I am buying my way out of the electric chair. All right, grab him. No, no, please. Please, please, please. I, I want to pay. Still. I'm the guilty one, and I want to pay my debt to society. Hold it. No, let me go. Let me, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I must That's pay. It. Steady. This will quiet him. <laughs> Uh, hypodermic needle. An injection. It'll knock me out. I can't act if I'm unconscious. 
I can't play my part if my guilty, guilty part if got, got to hurt myself, got to hurt myself. In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization goes far beyond a formidable military defense organization. Within its networks of committees functions the machinery to contribute to further development of peaceful and friendly international relations by strength of sharing tasks and pooling scientific facilities and information. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring Vincent Price, Act Three of Rave Notice. Quiet here, so white. Such sweet stillness and peace. Gone the darkness of the cell, steel and concrete. They're watching me very carefully. The taller one, he's new. The other gave me the hypodermic, yes. Hypodermic? How long have I been out? Did I say anything while I was out? Perhaps if I keep still, they will let me know. Say, your definite suicidal tendencies, doctor? Well, to put it another way, obsessive guilt with a compulsion to self-destruction. Mm, nothing new about that. Mm. Look, he's opening his eyes. Mm. Hello? Mm. You awake? Who are you? You remember me, don't you? No. Well, I gave you something mm. to quiet you a little while ago. A little while ago, huh? When you were trying to injure yourself so we'd think you're insane. Mm. And you've decided to give that up, haven't you? I have to carry out my sentence, you know. How will you carry out your sentence? Be smashed. I'm to be smashed as I have smashed the cat. Is that the law? Yes, I smashed him with a stick. Stick? Hmm. You mean shotgun, don't you? Oh, why would I say shotgun if I meant stick? I said stick. But you shot the man with a shotgun. He's a cat, and I smashed him with a stick. But after you smashed him with a stick, what happened? What? What happened after he was dead? I was frightened. I went home. Mama was there. She said... How did you get blood on your hands? I said, a dog licked my hand, and he had blood on his teeth. I understand you're an actor. Oh, aren't, aren't we all actors? We try to act innocent when we're guilty. Mm, uh, doctor, will you step outside a moment? I've got them. I've got them. What are they talking about out there? I wish I knew. It doesn't matter. I've got them. I know that. I've got them. I've got them. Well, I, uh, I guess you'll be leaving us soon. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're very understanding, Doctor. I'm, I'm guilty and I must pay you know that. What the doctor means is that you're going to a place where they'll help you to get well. Get well? Huh? Yes, of course. Uh, doctor, if you'll have the affidavits drawn up, I'll sign. We'll get a court order committing him. Right. Seems you were right all along. You know, I wasn't sure until you told me about the man he shot being out of danger. Oh, yes. The guards told the patient his victim had recovered, but he didn't comprehend, of course. Went right on screaming and punishing himself. Mm. I see. What would they have given him if we'd found him sane? Well, that depends. If the injured party refused to press charges, he'd be out of here in an hour. Recovered? They didn't tell me Norman had recovered. How could he have recovered? I shot him in his fat paunch. When did they tell me? It was while I was screaming, maybe I... I was really into the part then, deep in it. I couldn't have heard them, couldn't have heard. And now, now he'll be free and I will go off to an insane asylum married to a role that I loathe, that I hate. No. No. Doctor! Doctor, come back, come back. It was all a joke, doctor, a game. Come back, come back. What is it? Listen, doctor, I have a confession to make. I'm not insane. Please believe me, believe me. Oh, of course you're not. Just a little confused, that's all. Oh, no, you're wrong. Don't you see it was all a gag? Just a gag? Yes, of course it was. 
Now you're going to a place where you can rest and everything's going to be all right. No, no, believe me, I am sane. Why shout? I'm not shouting. I only want to impress on but you. You were shouting rather loudly. Look, my lawyer said if, 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 if I could prove insanity, I wouldn't go to the chair. Chair? Yes. I thought you were to be, you said, smashed. I forget that. that. That was a part of the method. Method? The Stanislavski method. It's a system of acting. What do you think, Doctor? Uh, I don't know. Huh? Well, the patient seems to be telling the truth. Yes, he does. I, I, I can fool you all over again if you feel it's necessary to prove my point. No, I, uh, I don't believe you'll be able to fool us again. Doctor, what's your opinion? I say the man's in full control of his faculties, is aware of his crime, and committed it out of what society calls a sober motive. I say the man is sane. Mm. You, sir... Mm. Do you agree with the doctor? It's what I've been telling you. And I say same. That makes it unanimous. Oh, gentlemen, never in the history of the theater has such a performance been rendered. Nor under such adverse circumstances. Uh, just one more question. <laughs> of course. Why did you kill him? Kill him? But I, I didn't. I shot him, that's all. Shot. You... Mean shot, don't you? Don't don't you? No. But he, Norman, he is, is dead. Yes, and you were sane, and you were going to repay society with your life. Norman is dead. Treacherous, lecherous body villain! Bring down the curtain. The play is ended. <laughs> Suspense, in which Vincent Price starred in William N. Robeson's production of Rave Notice by James Poe. Supporting Vincent Price in Rave Notice were Lou Merrill, Peter Leeds, Barney Phillips, Jack Crucian, Jim Nusser, and Jerome Thor. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Mr. Larry Parks in The Invisible Ape, another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.